Hello, welcome to Secrets of the Stones. Today's stone is rhodonite. Rhodonite is pinkish or brownish red and frequently contains inclusions of manganese oxide. These inclusions are usually black and pink in color. The pink shade represents the heart and the black the kidneys which is why rhodonite is beneficial for improving communication between the heart and the kidneys. In nature, rhodonite is formed when manganese encounters hydrothermal activity and is pushed into the holes or wounds of the earth. It appears in large blocks, but can also be found in tabular crystals. Rhodonite is composed of manganese silicate. Its crystalline structure is pictured to the right. It can also contain a lot of calcium and small quantities of magnesium, iron, aluminum, and zinc sometimes. It is found in two places which produce blood red transparent crystals. These are New South Wales, Australia, and Minas Gerais, Brazil. Other places include Peru, Sweden, Russia, Italy, and the United States. Incidentally, rhodonite is the state stone of Massachusetts. This stone has an antihistamine effect and is beneficial for allergies. It is very moving and nourishing to the life force energy of the body the chi. While it's forming in the earth, it covers and seals the holes or wounds of the earth. This is why the ancient Taoist practitioners believed it could help heal non-healing wounds and mend bones. This stone also has an energetic um, affinity for the Z-cleft points, which are um, acupuncture points used in emergency situations. Some points stop bleeding, others stop acute cough or acute stomach pain. This stone is very important because it has access to the blood and nutrient levels as well as the defensive and essence levels. The, um, there are very few stones that can access both the outermost way level and the innermost essence. It was popular in the tradition of the Shanghai which is a medical text devoted to the treatment of disease caused by cold. And it was prized for its ability to enhance the chi, strengthen it, and prevent pathogens caused by wind and cold weather from penetrating into the body. So how can it be used according to ancient practitioners? Well, apparently rhodonite has a triclinic crystal structure and an affinity for the temperament yang fire, which is associated with the triple energizer and the small intestine meridians. Here are some um, examples of this type and how they might behave, how they might um, process information. Rhodonite tonifies the chi, especially the heart, lung, and spleen chi and is indicated for frequent illnesses caused by internal or external factors. It's also beneficial for heart, heart conditions um, with symptoms that include shortness of breath after climbing a flight of stairs or extreme lethargy after ex exertion. It is useful for treating chronic allergies and hives, especially when elicited by stress, bronchitis, and vulnerability of the nervous system. 
is good for calming the digestion in general and is helpful for diarrhea and abdominal distension. Because it regulates the outermost defensive Wei Qi, it protects us against external pathogens and it is beneficial for either an underactive or an overactive response to um, pathogens such as recurring colds or allergies. It moves the qi in the body and this helps clear heat. Um, it can help it address um, signs of menopause as well as some chronic inflammatory conditions that affect the nerves such as spasms, tremors, um, ringing in the ears, twitching of the eyes, or stuttering. Raynaud syndrome is, a, is um, frequently um, combined with cold hands, um, and this stone is beneficial for um, alleviating those cold hands, neuropathy, or loss of sensation in the limbs. It has the ability to break up stagnant blood and can help treat bruises or blood clots. Rhodonite also nourishes the chi of the heart, which gives it the, us the ability to calm ourselves, calm our spirit. And it is beneficial for treating anxiety, trauma, fear, and phobias. This stone also helps regenerate tissue and is helpful for healing broken bones, scarring of the bones, surgical scars, burns, accumulations, and the side effects of radiation. It is beneficial for softening areas of hardness in the arteries um, or joints, and it also helps soften rigid att attitudes. This stone is beneficial for people who lack emotional or physical warmth and can be used during times when the heart is being challenged by difficulties. It brings awareness to the nature of these challenges and helps bring acceptance or resolution. It is beneficial for cultivating relationships. You can place a sculpture of rhodonite in the south corner of the home to help cultivate unconditional love. In the Qing Dynasty, it was used to attract the lesson of what it means to be in love with no conditions and it was also used to help people gain an understanding of the elusive nature of love itself. There are some practical applications so let's get into them. You can rub a, ro a rhodonite stone directly onto your wounds or injuries to promote regeneration of tissue. After radiation, you can place the rhodonite crystal over the areas that have been treated. You can also hold a sphere in the hands to help with cold hands caused by Raynaud's syndrome or the tremors or shaking that might occur with multiple sclerosis. As mentioned previously, rhodonite has an affinity for the Z-cleft points. Um, you can use the stone or rub it or massage or tape it with surgical tape to these specific points to treat acute conditions and emergencies. So the Z-cleft point of the lung is um, two hands widths above the inner crease of the wrist in line with the thumb and this is good for treating swelling of the throat. The Z-cleft point of the large intestine is one hands width above the crease of the wrist on the forearm also in line with the thumb and this point treats vomiting. Sorry. You can place rhodonite in the depression two thumb widths above the lateral edge of the kneecap. This is the Z-cleft point of the stomach meridian and this point helps treat knee pain. The Z-cleft point of the spleen meridian is on the inner side of the lower leg 
in the depression, one hands width below the depression at the base of the inner knee, in line with the highest point of the inner ankle bone. And it is the C cleft point of the spleen. This point is beneficial for managing painful menstruation. The Z cleft point of the heart is known as heart six and is beneficial for treating palpitations. It is located on the little finger side of the inner wrist. In the depression two, fingers width above the crease of the wrist. The small intestine point is beneficial for acute shoulder pain and is located on the back of the wrist. In the depression, just on the inner side of the tip of the styloid process of the ulna, as you can see in the picture. This is called the medial side. The Z cleft point of the bladder meridian is located on the outer edge of the foot in the depression in line with the heel, as pictured above. This point treats um, diarrhea. The Z cleft point of the kidney is kidney five. It is in the depression on the inner aspect of the heel and behind the ankle bone, as you can see. It treats acute lower abdominal pain. The Z-club point for the pericardium meridian treats acute emotional distress. You can place the stone slightly more than one hand's width above the inner crease of the wrist or five thumbs widths above, if you are being exact and in line with the middle finger. As you can see, this point is in between the tendons. This treats acute emotional distress. You can place rhodonite on the forearm, one hand's width above the crease of the wrist, and in line with the fourth finger. This is known as triple energizer seven, and it treats ringing in the ears. The gallbladder point um, treats painful skin conditions and it's located in the groove between the fibula and the tibula on the side of the lower leg, almost halfway between the highest point of the outer ankle bone and the crease behind the knee. The Z-cleft point for the liver is called liver six and it treats excessive uterine bleeding. You can place the stone behind the shin bone on the inner aspect of the lower leg, almost halfway between the highest point of the medial malleolus, pictured above, and the crease of the back of the knee. This point, this the liver channel treat, helps women um, issues with the uh, menstruation commonly, and also the spleen. You can place rhodonite on the top of the hand in the web between the thumb and the forefinger. This is called large intestine four. And you can place it between the second toes on the top of the foot. This point is known as liver three. This combination treats jet lag. It also helps alleviate headaches caused by liver young rising to the head. And it helps people adjust to new or foreign environments. The lower connecting point of the stomach and the spleen helps stop mental confusion, feeble-mindedness, and disorientation. Um, the stomach point is located on the outer edge of the lower leg, halfway between the highest point of the outer ankle bone and the crease of the back of the knee, and two fingers width lateral to the shin bone, as you could see above. The point for the spleen, known as spleen four, is located by sliding the finger along the edge of the big toe, starting in the area where a bunion might form. You slide your finger until it reaches the first metatarsal bone, as you could see in the diagram below. You can treat allergies with rhodonite by rubbing the stone on a group of points known as the Hussey points. They are mostly located behind or below the knee. This will help release the allergens from the system and help break up tension that has accumulated in the shoulders and the neck. 
After massaging these points, you can massage the area between the thumb and the forefinger, or large intestine 4, as we discussed previously, to break up sinus congestion. It should be noted that large intestine 4 can be found when you make a fist and you can feel the top of the muscle bulge, at the highest point of the bulge. That point will usually be tender if there is indeed a headache. Rhodonite clears heat, while aquamarine generates fluids. When combined, these two stones can help treat Sojourn syndrome and conditions where the body's fluids are deficient and there is a lot of dryness. Both stones have antihistamine properties. So this stone can be combined with aquamarine, which is a, a type of barrel, um, for allergies. You can wear an amulet of rhodonite with the stone touching the center of the chest on a point called Ren 17. This point is two, um, halfway between the two nipples and in the center of the sternum. This point can also address the functions and, and uses mentioned in this video. When taken over a long period of time, rhodonite elixir is said to be beneficial for treating autoimmune conditions. It can be cleansed in running water and allowed to dry in the sun. And here are some pictures of rhodonite. Well, thank you for joining me today on Secrets of the Stones. I hope you're having a beautiful weekend and a happy Easter Sunday to all. Whether you celebrate the equinox or another holiday. Happy spring. And I'll see you next time.